Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will make this vintage mini Dresden plate angel ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make our vintage mini Dresden plate angel ornament, the first thing we'll need are eight Dresden plate sections. I sometimes I call them petals. I was very fortunate to pick up thousands of these at a vintage show. And for our project today, I just pulled out some reds and greens so that she'll look Christmassy. These are about two and a half inches long and about two inches wide at the widest point. You can even find, um, you know, dies that will cut these with your die cutting machine. And you don't have to use vintage prints. I don't know if these are from the 30s or the 40s or when they're from. I almost did one in pastels too. This is really a pretty combination, but. I thought I'd stick with Christmas for today. Um, you could do, use modern prints. You could cut these even from little charm squares. Um, or if you have some vintage scraps, they're always fun to use. We'll also need some bias tape. This is also vintage. Um, it is four yards and the color is Nile. From four yards of the vintage bias tape, we can make five angels. There's one spool, one head, and two little feet from wood for each angel body. And the head is 20 millimeters, which is about three quarters of an inch. These little feet, these <laughs> are five eighths of an inch long and three eighths at their largest diameter. And the spool is three quarters of an inch tall and five eighths of an inch in diameter at the top, not in here. So to start, we're going to wrap this spool with a section of the bias tape, just enough to go around. I'm going to use my hot glue gun to secure this. I'll apply some glue to the spool and then press the bias tape into it, into the glue. And you'll see that the bias tape does not completely cover the um, the center of the spool here, and that's okay. Just push it up to one edge. Don't center it. Push it up to one edge. Then in the back where, um, where the ends overlap will be the back and you won't see that. Thank goodness. All right, and then from the other end of the bias tape, I've already folded it together and sewn it so that it's all a folded over strip like this. And I will need to cut two lengths from this. The arms are seven inches. And then the legs and the body, it's just one piece that makes the legs and the body, is 20 inches. That's left over. And there's the 20 and the seven. So to assemble the body, we will fold this in half. This is the 20 inch length. And then I'm gonna cut a piece of this ribbon. This'll be the hanging loop. And I will loop this through. And Let's see, I'm going to thread this through the spool and then through the head. And I'm gonna pull this until the bias tape is inside the head, but not so that it comes out. So it's right there. And then I'll tie a knot in the top for the hanger. And then I'm going to back that down a little bit or maybe up a little bit and put a drop of glue there in the back and then slide that on so that that'll stay. Now before I push this up, I'm going to insert the arms. So the arms will go through. Great. And then 
and push that on nice and tight. And then I'm going to securely tie this underneath the spool. One, two, and then knots in the ends of the hands. So we have a little knot here and here. This part will be covered. Oh, I forgot to use the one with the, <laughs> I forgot to use the one with the, um, with the bias tape. So I'll just do another piece of bias tape and that way I can show it again. There we go. And then I'll just add a little bit of extra glue where the bias tape overlaps. That looks good. Okay, now before we tie off the feet, we're going to put these little beads on. It can be tricky. Sometimes I just push it through with a needle. This seems to be working though. Then an overhand knot below the foot so that won't get off, that stays on. And the same thing for this foot. The feet don't have to be the exact same length. One can be shorter, one can be longer, it's okay. But if you want them to be the exact same length, you can adjust it now. Let's, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's see. Okay, so that looks about right. I think this one's going to be fine. They're not going to be off. Sometimes they're way off. So before you tie it, it's kind of a good idea to check. So here I have the foundation of this project. And once you have this, oh, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue so that the arms don't um, slip from side to side. So I'll put a little bit of glue back here, right there, just to make sure the head is, um, kind of holding on to this to prevent this from slipping from side to side. Now, once you have this, um, you can do anything with it. You know, you can gather up some lace around her waist or um, just any kind of fabric or use any kind of hair. You could put some, I have these flowers here. Later on, you could put flowers in her hands. She doesn't have to be Christmassy. She could just be a little doll. So once you have this down, the options are endless. I have eight of these wedges. I kind of went sort of like red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green. And I'm going to sew them all up um, side to side all the way around into a ring. I've sewn all of these sections together and now I'm going to gather up the waist. So I'm just going to uh, do a running stitch here. I did not press this or anything since we're gathering it. It was kind of pointless to press it, but you could if you wanted. I'm not worried about these raw edges because I'm gonna have a bow. It'll sit right there and disguise anything that looks raggedy. I want my thread, I forgot, I want my thread to end up on top through here. Before I put her skirt on, I want to create a petticoat so that she has a little bit more fullness. So I'm going to cut off a piece of tulle about 18 inches long, about this long. This is six inch tulle. And I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise. So these are the edges here. I know it's hard to see. And then this is the fold. So I'm going to gather up along the edges, gathering both edges as one. So starting at one end at the top where the raw edges are, I'm just going to do a running stitch and gather this up. 
I'm taking big stitches and I'm pretty far in from the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just lifts her skirt a little bit. Then I'll place this little petticoat around her waist nice and low, almost right around the very bottom edge so that the thread sits right in this groove between the base of the spool and where the, um, the bias tape is. And I'll join the ends together, draw it up, making sure I don't get the legs or the arms or anything else caught in there. I'll secure the thread right there in the back. I'll tie it off and then I'm also going to glue it. There we go. Okay, here's the skirt. Now it does have raw edges and that is not a big deal because they will be concealed. I want about um, half of the width of the bias tape to show. About like that. Cute. Okay, I'll secure this in the back and then I'll also secure it with glue. I kind of have the skirt um, how I like it. So I'm gonna spread some glue right here. Then I'm gonna pull the skirt down into the glue. That looks cute. Okay, let's do our hair. I have this loopy mohair and I'm going to do the Rick Rack Ruby hair. Just loop it around like a figure eight. One, two, three, four. And I do have a video in the Rick Rack Ruby Basics that describes this technique. And then tie it off in the center. Make two bundles like this, one for the front of the head and one for the back. One, two, three, four. Cut a nice long tail and go around, pick up the first end and tie it off in the center with a square knot. The first bundle I'm going to glue to the back of the head, so I'll apply some glue right here. Behind the hanging loop and press the yarn into the glue on the back of her head. About like that. The back is just to cover the head. There's not a lot of finessing. And then the second um, bundle will go in the front. So I'll put some glue right there, right in front of the hanging loop, hanging loop, like that. And then I'll put some glue on the side, twist the bundle back, and press it into the glue. And then the same thing on this side. Squeeze out a little glue. Press the bundle back. And into the glue. There we go. Now a little halo. This is 20 gauge gold wire. Just a little short piece, about two inches. I'm going to wrap it around my thimble, make sure it's nice and round. And then a little bit of glue on each end of the wire and press that in like a hairband, just like that. 
Then let's see what's next. Okay, now she's gonna get a little bow. And I just put the bow right here, center front. It sort of conceals the raw edges at the top of her skirt and adds a little bit of a decoration. That's about right. Then finally, I will add a little, like a little lace daisy just under her chin, kind of like a collar. These little ones are good, but you can use anything. And I'm gonna put it right here, kind of like a collar. And she would not be an angel without wings. So I've already prepared these wings from this uh, scrapbook paper that was printed with Christmas music. So I thought that was good. This is a little bit less than four inches across, probably three and three quarter inches. I cut it out with my die, die cutting machine, but you can just, um, if you don't have a die cutting machine with a scallop circle, you can just cut out a circle and then um, trim it with some scalloping shears. That's the way I used to make wings before I had a die cutting machine. So I'm just gluing this to the back of her head. Here's how she looks in the back. So you don't really have to worry about the, um, the bias tape overlapping or the raw edge of the skirt because everything is concealed. <laughs> and let's have a look. I'm gonna say she's done. She is cute. Let's have her going like that. Okay, aw. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.